That's 27cash.com. 27cash.com. This is a shout out to all hardworking farmers and ranchers. If you're looking for the cream of the crop in post frame construction, look no further than Thor Buildings. Because let's face it, having the right size building for your equipment or livestock is crucial for your success. At Thor Buildings, they'll design your building for max efficiency, customized to tackle the seasonal weather in your neck of the woods. Post frame construction tailored to your livestock and ag needs. Buildings built better, stronger, and built to last. So when it's time to put the hammer down, build with Thor. Visit ThorBuildings.com today. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Richard Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And welcome to Weather and Ag in Focus at 106 in the afternoon on this Friday, January 20th. At least that's what it looks like outside. A little bit of the white stuff fell overnight, guys. Wasn't too bad though. We picked up about an inch here in the Fargo Moorhead area. There's a little bit more out in Lakes Country and a little bit more down towards the uh, South Dakota border. But overall, it was kind of just a nuisance thing. And now the sun is melting a lot of that away this afternoon. Did you guys survive storm number one? I didn't get anything. Nah, you always Aww. miss out. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you could always come south. <laughs> There was indeed um, enough to make the ground white here this morning, uh, and I'm about 35, 40 miles from Fargo. So nothing terrible, but I think it's a foretaste of what's to come for the weekend. And, you know, when you lived in this region long enough, you can look out the window and think to yourself, it looks cold out there. Like you can judge the temperature on site. And that's kind of what it feels like today when you look outside. Yeah, it d- definitely does. What happened to the nice weather we had just a week ago? Man, it's close to I 70. don't know, Dean. Where'd that go? That's Justin's <laughs> fault. That's yeah, his. Dean, where'd it go? That's Justin's the one that's been wishing for <laughs> snow all, all winter. So you can peg this on him. I was all in full spring mode, but. Mother Nature not quite panning that out. In fact, we've got uh, partly cloudy skies out there right now um, to mostly cloudy. The sun is helping a little bit. We're in the 20s, and we should warm up into the low 30s today with a little bit of a breeze out of the north at about 10 to 20. Tonight, a quiet night, clear to partly cloudy with lows down into the teens. And Saturday, that's the day to go get your milk, bread, eggs, and liquor. Uh, I'm sure the the grocery stores are going to be packed tomorrow. That's a calm before the storm. Increasing clouds, highs in the 20s, upper 20s to near 30. And then uh, the snow starts uh, late Saturday night out to the southwest of the FM area. And that will gradually spread northeastward. Uh, And by Sunday morning, we'll start to see light snow. And then by Sunday afternoon, that snow intensity will increase. And uh, by Sunday night, we should be having periods of heavy snow. And by Monday, we're ripping the wind in with it as well. So uh, winter storm watches are in effect for all of the area they've expanded the winter storm watches now to the north and to include grand forks uh and uh northwest minnesota so everybody under a winter storm watch right now more than likely this is going to be upgraded to a warning i'm sure and then as we head uh uh by the time the snow winds down on tuesday morning winds will still be uh still on the breezy side but we'll have winds during this event especially on monday anywhere between 20 and 30 miles an hour. So that's going to be causing problems as well. Uh, looks like, uh, J- Justin, what's your what's your first guess on how much snow? Uh, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to vary across the area, but here in the FM area, what, what's your guess on how much you think we're going we're gonna to get out of this? Educate, Fargo? Educated guess, not how much you want. <laughs> uh, I was going to say like 49, but I had eight seven eight you, you don't think it'll be more than that like seven eight inches i bet okay any wagers i, I mean There's i could definitely... see upwards of a foot but uh i don't know i i think i think seven eight's a safe bet for what we'll get okay i've got one snow bet already on the line if you'd like to make another one i'll give you eight for the over under under you're gonna go under eight <laughs> I'm going to go under eight. I'll right. always bet against you, Dean. Okay. 10 or 20. You want to go 10 or 20? We want enough at least for lunch. <laughs> well, lunch today is 30 bucks. Okay. <laughs> this would be an appetizer. Let's do lunch. Let's do lunch for next uh, week. You want... <laughs> does the uh, does the buyer get to pick where we go? 
the because bo- <laughs> I'm not bringing you to a steakhouse. <laughs> uh, yeah, the the buyer can can choose. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we'll yeah, do lunch. We'll, eight eight I'll inches. Bet lunch on, yeah. You said eight, and you're taking the under. I'll go under. Okay, eight. I'll take the over. This will cover. This will cover me for my other bet. Sounds like Bridget, <laughs> what are you thinking? I, I went. You're an honorary. I went. I went uh, with uh, one of my buddies. He's like, yeah, we never get as much as a, as the uh, models predict. I'm like, yeah, we're, you're right. We typically don't. But some of the models are going uh, at least twelve. Uh, and uh, I said, let's do the over yeah. under. And I made this bet four days ago. I said, let's set the over under at ten. And so he always takes the under. So I said, now I'm kind of sweating it. I'm thinking, man, this might be a little close now. <laughs> but even <laughs> you know, whether we get six, eight, ten inches. Uh, potato potato uh we're looking at quite a bit of wind with this so uh there's going to be areas south and southeast of the fm area that could easily get a foot and a half out of this Uh, and you factor in the winds i'm sure 29 going south and 94 uh in either direction is boy it's it's going to be really difficult uh come monday so if you have any travel plans uh, in and around the area, please keep up to date on the forecast as uh, the storm is just coming ashore right now in California. So uh, once this gets on shore, then we get better model data. And so we'll see how the, the models react now that the system is coming on shore. But they've been pretty darn consistent <laughs> over the they last sure three days. Sure. So uh, yeah. the least the least I've seen for our area is six inches. Uh, yeah. And the most I've seen... Um, is I won't even say because it's I, I don't even want that number out there because <laughs> then people will gravitate. Oh, did you, hear what, did you hear what they said? They said over 20 inches. Uh, yeah, we're not getting <laughs> I highly doubt we're going to see that, but we'll wait and see. Wait and see how the system pans out. But the biggest one of the season so far, for sure. And um, again, if you have travel plans, uh, this is going to be a major storm uh, Sunday into Monday. So just keep the even into the early Tuesday. So keep that in mind. Might want to yeah, adjust, fun, fun. and I know I know Bridget has already adjusted her travel plans because. <laughs> well, I think your event just you, got plane canceled. So, you you can't blame this one on me. Um, I think uh, my event moved to a virtual setting, so I don't have to be on the road. But that is not my fault. Uh, this time, I am not leading the charge into the bad weather systems. I know sometimes that makes the rest of you just see red when I do bad things. But it's not my fault this time. Right. This time. Well, and if you, you know, this is our Christmas storm on the LRC. And mm-hmm. each time that system, so the first time or the second time it came around through the cycle on Christmas, that's when it gave us that one to three inches of rain with the big ice storm. The second time it came through, or the next time it came through on the LRC cycle, I believe we got, what, close to an inch, I think, somewhere around there of it rain. A, it was an inch of rain <laughs> and a dusting to a dime of ice from grand forks jamestown right. again i think it was a couple hundredths yep. of an inch but still there was ice with it and it seems like the, the, the each cycle kind of flip flops a little bit so if this goes back to the cycle that was at christmas you know you you get one to two inches of rain and translate that into snow you're looking and it's right on target 90 day we're on a 45 day cycle roughly mm-hmm. this weekend is 90 days after christmas that's not a coincidence <laughs> That's not a coincidence. Just this time we're cold enough for snow instead of rain. And you know what? We need the moisture. It's not It's not entirely bad. This will be probably a nice slow melt um, as we head into mid-April. So that's, all, that's good. It's a good thing. Just keep mm-hmm. telling yourself that. <laughs> well, and it's okay because at this point, uh, if we can get not just – thinking about what happens in our soil subsurface if we get moisture to, to move into the soil profile. But you do have those who are out there that want to see stock tanks and cr- cricks and so forth refilled because they're going to have livestock going out to pasture before too long. And it's nice to have more uh, snowfall on those pastures as well because we'd like to see them come back and rebound this spring very well. Um, there have been folks that have been out burning pastures and they're going to need some moisture in order to make sure that those pastures come back nicely for the summer. Right. And uh, well, go ahead. Don't forget about the snowmobilers. I mean, there's a lot of people excited about this snow over in Lakes Country. If they haven't already put them away for the, <clears throat> right. for the spring, Winterize. they're taking them back out. Mm-hmm. And snow removal companies, this is extra money for them. I mean, they haven't had much work so far this winter, so that's good news for them as well. 
Uh-huh. Now, Absolutely. I don't know if you look beyond next or beyond this weekend, but there's <laughs> I chuckle because, man, Mother Nature just has a funny way of paying us back. There's two more systems in the pipeline, and one of them coming in Easter weekend. Not good timing there. Um, so we'll be keeping a close eye on Easter weekend, and then there's one more after that uh, in early April before I think the pattern starts to break. So we're kind of in, that, is, we're in that stormy part of the LRC cycle right now. What do we think Easter weekend's going to be? Are you looking at more snow or rainfall, guys? Oh, boy. A couple of the models trying to drag it south, but it looks cold enough for, for snow from what I've been seeing. If it stays on track, oh, we'll I, see. I have bad news for many of you now, then. <laughs> uh, where are you going? Every time you travel. I'll, I will be in Oklahoma next week, and so from here to there, it could be just a trail of destruction oh, right behind no, me. Oh, man. Oh, you're something else, man. I I swear to God, we're going to get you involved in the LRC equation when it comes to I already am. I don't think Gary's got it in his model officially yet, though. We've got to really incorporate this into his model. I mean, we've joked with him about it, but this is a definite (laughs) factor here. (laughs) Yeah, you get now you get the B factor. You get the B factor. Well, Bridget, um, we do have some guests coming up here after we take a quick break here. You want to introduce who our guests are going to be? Well, we do. And these gentlemen are um, actually they're hanging out with you right now, too, Dean. So it is nice to welcome Eric Holland as well as Derek Bopp. They are in the studio with you. They are from the Cheyenne Valley Area Career and Technical Center from Valley City, North Dakota. And I'm looking forward to visiting with them. They are looking for an ag teacher, number one. So let's keep that in mind for those who are looking to make a job change or are going to be graduating from college and looking for a job. And two, they want to talk about some of these technical careers in ag and the trades and how we can get more folks involved in those. Looking forward to hearing what their program is about, what they do, how they're looking to recruit. I think we can all be a big part of that. So We'll do that. We have Cheyenne Garden Trivia today so that we can give away a $10 gift certificate for them. Justin's going to have a, a trivia question for us to answer as we get to the back half of our hour. And just right now, we want to make sure we catch up with the American Egg Network. So don't go anywhere. We are looking forward to having you right back here in just a few moments. Seeing hesitant trade action ahead of the Catalan Feed Report. You're listening to the American Ag Network. I'm Jesse Allen with this market update. Well, cattle futures have pretty much been under pressure all day long, showing some hesitancy ahead of this afternoon's cattle on feed numbers that will be out at 2 p.m. Central Time. Triple digit losses in both fats and feeders here on the day as that on feed report is expected to showcase higher placements, which normally will negatively impact the market, but It's also, we got to keep that in perspective with where we were last year. So it'll be interesting to see how the trade reacts to whatever the numbers do look like from USDA. No more cash cattle trade has really developed here until some more cleanup trade could develop here ahead of the week's end. So we're going to watch that late in the afternoon. Box beef prices mixed choice down 218, 311.55 with select up 99 cents at 304.72. Light movement being seen there. This week's cash cattle trade, Mainly been 188 live in the south with some 302 northern dress trade being seen as well. Also, National Beef Packing Company did share a statement on Friday morning that processing at the Liberal Kansas plant will be delayed until Monday. So maybe that's having a little impact in the cattle markets as well. Now, the hog side complex so finally finding a little bit of strength here at week's end, uh, which uh, we've seen this hog market really uh, endure a lot of pressure this week as we bumped up against some overhead technical resistance. Seeing these markets up slightly here as we head into the close on Friday. You're listening to the American Ag Network. When news happens in agriculture or when the markets are moving, we've got you covered as your trusted voice in agriculture. The team at the American Ag Network has the knowledge and experience to keep you informed on the issues impacting farmers and ranchers. We've got you covered on air, online, and on demand. Find the American Ag Network on your favorite social media platforms and also follow the American Ag Today podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We are the American Ag Network. Make sure to subscribe to the Market Talk YouTube channel. You can watch our latest interviews with top market analysts in the country, find bonus content, and much more. It's easy. Just go to youtube.com slash at Market Talk Egg and hit the subscribe button. Or you can search for Market Talk Egg on YouTube. 
Get the latest bonus interviews, exclusive content, and more with the American Ag Today podcast. Just search for American Ag Today and give us a follow wherever you get your podcasts. Feeder cattle index right now up 41, 251.82. The hog index up 33 at 83.54. In futures trade, May hogs up 87, 90.77. April feeders down 317, 251.45. And April live cattle down 97, 187.40. Let's check a livestock trade here this afternoon on the American Ag Network. I'm Jesse Allen. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Bridget Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And welcome back. So glad you are joining us this afternoon for Weather and Ag in Focus. Thank you for being here. And a great big thank you to our guests. And I feel like they're going to tie in very, very well with the fact that we have a reoccurring discussion about Morton Buildings and how they're looking for people from the trades to be a part of their awesome team. MortonBuildings.com would like you to join them. They have excellent pay. They have good and bad weather pay. They have quarterly bonuses. They are 100% employee owned and they are looking for you to be a part of what they do every day. And now I think our guests can maybe help you find those skills as well before you go to MortonBuildings.com slash careers. And joining us today are Derek Bope and Eric Holland. They are from Valley City and they are with the Cheyenne Area Career and Technical Center. Gentlemen, how are you today? Excellent, excellent. Hey, thanks for letting us come on and tell us a little about or tell you a little bit about what we do and and uh, what our mission is. And yeah, appreciate the opportunity. Let's start there. What is it that y'all do over there in Valley City? Give us some background. Yeah, uh, part of our mission is to you know get students what we call job entry level ready in in a in a bunch of different areas. We 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 have egg ed. Uh, we teach a health careers course. We have a welding course. Um, Mr. Holland's here with us today. He teaches our graphic communications course and then automotive technologies as well. So uh, so this is more of a trade industry, basically, which a lot of kids are, are, are for, uh, well, I shouldn't say a lot, but more are gravitating now uh, away from more of a college to more of a trade school, uh, knowing that there's so many job openings in, in the trade industry right now. Yep, we have kind of seen that pendulum swing back and forth over time. But at the, at the moment, yeah, I think kids and, and parents alike are kind of talking about the return on investment for, for two- and four-year college and, and considering the, the opportunities that we have to, to get their students potentially job entry level ready and go right out into the workforce straight out of high school right. and, and at least explore some of these opportunities before deciding to go on to a two- or, or four-year college thereafter. So, hmm. yeah. a, lot of these, a lot of these students are literally coming through our programs and knocking on the doors of whether it's I kind of laughed when you talked about Morton buildings because we've got construction people that come in all the time and say hey you have somebody that can work or welding or or the automotive side of things so it's initially you know just a school it's for nine through 12th graders um, but as soon as they're as Mr. Bope alluded to earlier it's job entry level ready if they've gone through our program for the full four credits or whatever it happens to be, they are literally job entry level ready when they leave our doors. Wow. So. Man, I wish they we had this one when, when we were that age. And maybe they did, but well, I don't okay. think they did. <laughs> okay, so I remember the, the area technical centers at the time. There was Valley City. I think Oaks was another one. I think there's one up in the northeast part of the state. But how does this work? You know, you're talking about high school level students. How do students get to participate in your programs? Because you're not a strict high school, but you're affiliated with area high schools, correct? Correct. Yep. We have we serve four schools in our area: uh, the Litchfield, Marion, Maple Valley, Valley City, and Barnes County North school districts. But we also have a, a series of online and ITV classes that we'll send literally throughout anywhere in the state. Um, is, as long as we can package that in online. Obviously, when you take an online or ITV class, you're missing out on the hands-on portion, which we think is very valuable. Uh, so the majority of our students do travel in on a daily basis to not only receive the lecture side of things, but also uh, direct instruction on the hands-on side of learning as well. So, um, But yeah, uh, the legislature, state legislature, has done a good job over the last couple of years um, emphasizing career and technical education and, and putting some state dollars into 
um, not only supporting and, and adding on to career and tech centers that existed for several years like ours, but also bringing newer ones online, uh, especially in the western half of the state where there were fewer um, initially. So. Now, is there, a, is there a minimum GPA that the kids have to uh, have before they can take the classes? No, there isn't. It, um, actually, we have some exploratory level classes in the ninth and 10th grade, mm-hmm. um, but the, the meat of the programs uh, historically has been our 11th and 12th graders that um, you know, kind of are, are deciding on a career pathway and the opportunity. And if they stay in one of our programs for, for two years, uh, that job entry level ready, but also um, in some cases we have articulation agreements with uh, some of the two and four year colleges throughout the state that they can jump into that um, post-secondary education uh, further down the road, sometimes clepping out of a semester or a year's worth of, of classes by having taken two years of our classes at the what, current tech What's the placement rate um, for the kids that are that finish this and are ready to go into uh, one of the job markets? <laughs> we, <laughs> have, right. we have this written down. But okay. Well, there's, we gotta... <laughs> to some degree, um, I'm looking at here is that um, 96% of those that, and this isn't necessarily placement rates, it's just graduation right. rates at this point, but it's um, 96% of those North Dakota high school students participating in CTE programs have graduated in comparison to, it's like 85% wow. for just all around school. Um, so those kids that are coming through are actually, well, you think about it, right? These are those kids that want those hands-on experiences, and these are the ones that are going to go on to those future jobs. Um, I can give you an example of, we had one student come through and and uh, his potential was he was just going to leave school in all um, through um, auto and through welding at that point. Um, the kid won some Skills USA contest, which is our CTSO. It's kind of like an FFA or a, or a DECA. Um, and then he got a free ride to college and needed so well at college that then he wound up um, getting an offer from, from a NASCAR venue. Um, to actually go work Whoa. at that NASCAR venue. So, <laughs> yeah, you ended up yeah. working at Penske Racing. Yeah. And, uh, wow. You, you talk about students that are, you know, maybe school isn't their thing. You know, maybe and there's that, a lot, that, yeah. Yeah. And the trades are. So they come through and, you know, I, do you have actual placement rates? I, I don't. So I know from our career work experience classes that, you know, students that get to the end of their second year and, and we get them out in the career field and get, get to try try that on before they go on to two or four-year college, we're retaining about 86% of those students um, in our region, in our, in our state, um, to, to take jobs in our area. So that's kind of our, what we call those two-year completers. We, we'd look to try and get them their last semester of their senior year actually out in the, in the job force. Now, now I know like uh, in like the STEM, so for, for the science industry, you know, they're trying to recruit more, more females, which they've been very successful. I'm guessing with welding and mechanical stuff like that, you probably don't have a lot of females, or is that not the case? I've got all that documentation right in front of me. In fact, since I was looking at the agricultural bridge, it can probably confirm a lot of this stuff is in terms of our classrooms in the state of North Dakota back in 2021, in the agricultural programs, 71% were, were male right, and the 29% were female. Now, that changes as you go into education. It's like 17% compared to 83%. Mm-hmm. Um, in the arts like mine, it's, it's 48 to, um, to 52 um, so I could go through all of them, um, but STEM that you just referred to, eighty-one percent right. is male, right, and then only nineteen yeah. percent is on the female side. But um, and that has been increasing though over the yes. last few years. I, I, yeah, I was going to say. Oh, that. it has. Yeah, yeah. Over the last several years, we see more and more, you know, traditional male-dominated fields. Uh, more more women choosing to go into that. When I when I go around and, and talk about our classes and, and the need to have a good mix of both. Uh, I, I tell students there, there's certain qualities about the male and female anatomy and physiology that just makes you, you know, desirable in, f- for example, females in welding. Um, sometimes their attention to detail and, and, point, uh, and right? uh, you know, it ends up, you know, saving, saving welding companies money because they, they are, you know, double checking, triple checking mm-hmm. and, and are maybe a little bit more diligent than their male counterparts. And obviously, you know, some of the physicality of the job also potentially lends itself to to, to the male side. So there, there's there's reasons why it's been dominated over time, but we do see that shifting as right. well. That's good. That's good. Well, and females keep the guys on their toes. I mean, look at Bridget here. She keeps us in line when we start to go off track. So, you know. It- but also, there's 
but, you know, there's a whole lot of things that happen. Um, there's changes in what women want to do today, and you aren't necessarily steered away from those courses anymore. Uh, it takes someone a little bit different. You know, for instance, I took all the high school ag classes that I could. I never did take a home ec class, which would explain the incredibly terrible job I do of sewing buttons back on things. <laughs> but nonetheless, it makes a difference in where you want to go and what you want to want to wind up doing. Um, women as welders generally are better because they have a higher center of gravity. They usually have a steadier hand when it comes to laying a bead out. And also, um, when it comes to just some, like you said, the attention to detail, personally, if I were to do it all over again, rather than my four-year degree, I'd probably choose to go through the, some of these career technical courses in high school and then work my way over into a two-year school and I come out being an electrician because, you know, I'm kind of sparkly like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is 1.30, bottom of the hour right now, and we will be back. We want to continue this discussion with Eric and Derek. Hmm, that's fun. <laughs> they are here from Valley City with the Cheyenne Valley Area Career and Technical Center. Don't go away. We will be right back. Jay Thomas has a brand new show. The Common Sense Club with Jay Thomas, Scott Hennen, and Steve Halster. I mean, give me a break. Stop staring at a screen all day. I mean, guys, it's so bad, it's now on our roadways. It's, it's pathetic. Of course, now we see traffic accidents. Oh. And every time now you hear about a traffic accident involving... First thing you think. Uh, especially a young person. I mean, you would think half the people out there driving are just hammered. The Common Sense Club. Subscribe today at flagfamily.com slash plus. Agriculture plays an important part in our daily lives and provides almost everything we eat, use, and wear daily. Join Flum Region Mutual Insurance in saluting and thanking the farming families that keep the ag industry going. Have a great ag week and upcoming season from your friends at Flum Region Mutual Insurance. See the difference by contacting a Flum Region Mutual Insurance agent today for homeowners, personal liability, farm owners, and farm liability. Online at FlumRegionMutual.com. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Tucker, WDAY News First. Moorhead police have identified the three-year-old boy who died under suspicious circumstances as Easton Duranjek. We're told the child was rushed to the hospital Monday after he was found not breathing. He was later pronounced dead. Duranjek's body was taken to the Ramsey County Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy. His younger siblings are now in protective custody. A Minnesota lawmaker is pushing a bill that would strengthen penalties for those who purchase guns for felons. This after the shooting deaths of two police officers and a paramedic in her district. As we all know now, there were multiple guns in the home, and the AR-15 style weapons that were used against the first responders should not have been in possession of the assailant. Representative Kayla Berg from Burnsville says the bill closes loopholes to ensure current laws hold offenders accountable. Minnesota lawmakers are also considering a bill that would prohibit book banning across the state. Governor Walls and Lieutenant Governor Flanagan talked about the bill during a visit to a high school library in St. Paul. Walls said those who support book bans have, quote, never been on the right side of history. The proposed law would prevent banning books at public schools and school libraries. Tom Tucker, WDAY and WDAYRadioNow.com. What does it mean to be an owner? When you work for Morton Buildings, you become an employee owner through Morton Buildings Employee Stock Ownership Plan. You become the driving force behind the company's vision and goals. You have a passion for what you do and a relentless drive to make Morton Buildings the best it can be. Don't just be an employee. Become an owner with Morton Buildings. Visit mortonbuildings.com careers and join a select group of employee owners who have been focused on success for over a century. Did you know that just about everything we eat, wear, and use comes from American agriculture? Not only do they provide all that, but help meet needs around the world. During National Ag Week, your friends at Fevig Oil and Propane salute and thank all that work in agriculture. Fevig Oil and Propane is a name you've grown to trust over their 60 plus years of providing propane, farming fuel, and lubricant requirements to the area. Fevig Oil and Propane online at fevigoil.com. Weather and Ag in Focus on WDAY Radio. Oh, my God. 
And welcome back to Weather at Ag and Focus. I want to thank everybody for joining us. 135 in the afternoon. Temperatures out there in the 20s. Calm before the storm. Big snows heading our way as we head into the uh, latter part of the weekend. We'll have more on that in our last segment here after 145. But uh, we got a couple of gentlemen joining us, Eric and Derek from Cheyenne Valley Area Career and Tech Center, guys. And uh, I'll tell you what, um, boy, you guys have a tremendous just offering for kids out there. And I'll call them kids. They're kids. <laughs> yeah. There are kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you guys have had an opening uh, for anybody interested out there. Uh, you've had an opening for a while that you just haven't been able to fill. Can you give us a little example of what we're talking about? Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, because ag education is so varied in, in the course offerings that they can provide that there's a lot of demand currently for ag education teachers, and uh, the, the supply is just not keeping up. So I mentioned we posted our opening uh, last year about this time, and there were 22 other openings for that same position throughout the state. And when I called North Dakota State University, our local ag education uh, institution, they, they only had a half dozen students that would be entering that career field at that time. So uh, it, it just leaves quite a, quite a gap that we're, right. we're fighting with a number of other schools throughout the state to try and fill positions and um, one of the one of the things we're we're hoping to inform people of today is that there is another avenue to become an ag education teacher uh, it's called the transition to teaching if you have uh, four years of experience or more uh, working in an ag related field there's a, a program called transition to teaching through valley city state university that can help backfill the uh, education portion uh, that you would be missing to be an ag instructor uh, while letting you be an ag teacher at that time so there's a mentorship program um, mr holland often gets roped into being a mentor for for our teachers going through the transition to teaching program and uh, so so yeah it, it's it's hard to inform people that there is another avenue to enter ag education right. uh, other than going to a four-year college um, to become that teacher mm -hmm. so. and there's been a lot of programs that have needed to do that you know statewide and including our, our tri-state region, the demand for ag teachers has gone up tremendously over the last few years. We've watched an explosion of new chapters arriving at schools. And now schools that have had a long time had ag teachers are seeing a number of retirements as well. So those two things are colliding at the same time. And just Wednesday morning, I was at NDSU and spoke to an agri sales class and there was an ag education student in the room and she asked the question because I graduated in ag ed an extension and I never taught I actually went right to work in industry and she kind of asked me my story and how I wound up doing that the thing with ag teachers you come with such a spectacular background of expertise where you are good at preparing for classroom you're a good speaker you can pay attention to the details when you're doing lesson plans, but you also get a background whether it's in mechanics and welding and horticulture and agronomy and so much more. And that's those are valuable lessons that so many people are looking for, whether in an ag ed teacher or in industry. And so I can't encourage enough for those students who are in FFA that are thinking ahead about being ag teachers and those who are in industry who would like to do something different and look at the certification that Derek and Eric are talking about in helping others who have professional backgrounds uh, become teachers. Um, I'm going to be speaking to the Ashley FFA chapter here in the middle of April and that's how they got their teacher. So it's a varied system out there. So what I'm hearing, Bridget, is maybe you want to start teaching? I was just kidding. No, we don't want to lose her. No. She would be a good teacher, though. Uh -oh, she'd, be one, so, she'd be one with the ruler cracking cracking uh, top, tops of people's you, hands if they didn't listen. Yeah. Do you know why I don't teach? Is because during student teaching, they did make mention that corporal punishment was not allowed. What do you mean? I can't hit kids? It's true. Obviously, I should just work with adults. Uh, this, this isn't my thing. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that's part of it. Uh, now, for those students in high school that maybe want to participate, I heard you mention a virtual option. How do students who are outside of the four high schools that you work with get to be a part of what you do? Is that possible for them? Yeah, so in agriculture, obviously at the moment we don't have an instructor, but when we did, we had a, an intro to agriculture class that we provided in an online format, a kind of a hybrid format. He would actually travel out to their schools occasionally to do hands-on projects with them. Um, but, but a number of our other classes, if they're interested in taking um, 
one of Mr. Holland's graphic communication classes, for example, they would simply have their school administrator email me and uh, we would look what time a day that they might be available to a hybrid format or if they don't, uh, we could set them up for the online format and uh, at least get exposure to the class. I, I, like I mentioned earlier, it's not as ideal as having the full hands-on class, uh, but something is better than nothing for, for those that are you know, in a rural setting that mm -hmm. perhaps don't have access to CTE classes like that. Okay. Absolutely. And those CTE classes are huge for students just trying to figure out what they might want to be when they grow up. Yep. Uh, some of us still aren't real sure, <laughs> but it's nice to at least get some direction when you're in that freshman, sophomore, junior time frame of, of high school years. Yep, now, a, I heard also, oh, go ahead, please that, finish. That, that's a huge part of what we do as well, you know, job entry level, but also exploratory. Uh, it's just as valuable for a student to check something kind of off their list. Hey, you take one of our health careers classes and you're simulating drawing blood and whoop, I get queasy. <laughs> Probably shouldn't continue a career in, you know, <laughs> that career field. So that, that's just as valuable information to learn in high school before you pursue, you know, sure. two or four year degree in that. So. Yeah. It's a bad day if the phlebotomist and I all pass out together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Justin? Go ahead, Justin. Uh, so do you guys do any work with uh, kids post-graduation or anyone who's gone to, say, a two- or a four-year school and they come back to you? Do you do any work with them at all or have? Uh, to, an, to an extent, uh, Right now we have a, a welding course that we offer through our local economic development committee that uh, we, we partner together and uh, signs people up that might be interested in, in careers in the welding field. Um, occasionally in the past we have had community ed classes in some of our other courses as well. Uh, if, if I'm honest, it's less frequently because we ask our teachers to work a 40-hour week and they have some of their other things that they want to do uh, after, after they're done with what we ask sure. them to do daily. So, uh, But no, we have been open to that in the past and, and would continue to be. So, Yeah, I was just wondering for those that have, say, have gone to, uh, I'll use my brother in, as an example. He went to a university and he tried engineering for a year or two and ended up turning out or just it wasn't for him. And he ended up switching to a, a technical school around the area and now he's about to graduate with his electrical license so i was just wondering what people who have gone to you know the colleges and then switched to something else what they have have said about that whole transition to that journey we uh on occasion if you're talking about the physical contact afterwards is we'll have students walk in and actually sit and talk to the instructors during class on occasion even just because they they like to come back and visit with our instructors and 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 give that feedback. Um, I'll get emails on occasion from students that say, Mr. Holland, I, I really loved your class, and I went on to go into graphic design. Um, it just, and then it's just a good information, a good feedback to say, okay, where are you at? What did you do in that process, whether it was a two-year school or a four-year school? So I guess, Justin, the, the real answer there is, is we do have a fair amount of contact with those individuals afterwards to kind of give us an idea whether they hopped right into the field or they've gone on to that two or four year program after that. Yep. Some of those oh, former students great. like that we, we lean on as part of what we call our advisory committees to kind of come and give our programs feedback about what is, what is you know, the current state of the industry, what are some things that we can maybe brush up on that are, are emerging as part of that uh, career field so that we can incorporate those into our classes. And, and on the flip side, what are some things that are maybe outdated that we no longer need to you know, hit quite as hard as we do in right. some of our classes. So, I also, you know, you mentioned a few of the things that come to mind when students, you know, have graduated. One of them was your story about uh, the, the student that was going to completely leave school and then wound up working on a NASCAR team. Do you have other success stories like that or, you know, areas of success with employers that you want to make sure to highlight as well? Yeah, you know, we, we, after their junior year, we, people start inquiring about, you know, the, the skills in individual students have and uh, are probably, you know, the one that Mr. Hi uh, Holland highlighted is, is one of our, you know, favorite ones to point out. But I would say on the whole, just the success rate we have in preparing students to enter local job market, um, that that's what I'm most proud of is, is how many kids we, we get to expose to what is available around them without having to go to you know, further education potentially even, and uh, 
like Mr. Holland said, kids that were maybe considering dropping out of school, that we were able to show how they can apply the math, science, and English they've been learning all these years to, you know, put their hands on, right. uh, you know, something that they can create themselves. And, and, you know, there's some kids that college is just not for them. And, but this, is, like you said, this is something a little bit different that uh, can allow them to go on and be successful. And Bridget, the, the answer further to your question is, is that in some of our programs, our certification comes through already. So like the, the nursing program has the, is it CNA that CNA they can get certified through? Yep. yep. Um, ASE in the, in the automotive at, at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. My, my UAS program, um, should they graduate and go through the, the testing here in Fargo, um, they could walk out with a pilot's license after I call it a pilot. We're talking part one here, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there are certifications that, that come right. along with that. So, yep. And those things get, like you said, students are walking out the door ready to go to work because a two or four year program is not for everyone. But if you have the skill set to go out and do those jobs and be ready to roll, that is spot on for especially what employers are looking for as well. And I'm sure you have a long list of employers coming to you wanting to hire. Definitely. You got it. I tell kids all the time, go ahead and get these certifications, try out the career, you know, make some money in the meantime. And if you decide then that you need to go on to two or four year college to attain, you know, further credit and, and, and get the job that you're looking for, then you haven't wasted a bunch of time and money floundering around, you know, taking, you know, basic level classes in a two or four year college uh, and digging yourself a hole before you really find out what you want to do. Well, okay. For all of those tips and tricks that people are listening to, how do they get a hold of all of you directly when they want to ask questions, find more about you, all of that? Appreciate it. Yeah. My, my email address is Derek, D-E-R-R-I-C-K dot BOP, B-O-P-P at K12, K12 dot N-D, North Dakota dot U-S. Or they can call 701-845-0256. Again, 845-0256. That's our uh, tech center's number. And uh, yeah, we'd be happy to talk to anybody who's got an interest background and in, in maybe considering going through the transition to teaching program to, to become a teacher, not only for ag ed, but for any of our positions, whether it's for us, honestly, or any other career in tech education, I'd be happy to talk to them about that process. Great. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's really awesome to come on. Yeah, it's yeah. good. To, anytime you can talk to about CTE, uh, I can spend hours doing it. Right. So I uh, great opportunity to talk to this entire region. Uh, so it's noted awesome. for the <laughs> noted right. for the future right. schedule. Right. Thank there you, you so much. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna take a break here, pay a few bills. When we come back, we'll have a recap on the weather. Uh, we'll hit a couple more ag topics, and then we'll call it a wrap. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is a shout out to all hardworking farmers and ranchers. If you're looking for the cream of the crop in post frame construction, look no further than Thor Buildings. Because let's face it, having the right size building for your equipment or livestock is crucial for your success. At Thor Buildings, they'll design your building for max efficiency, customized to tackle the seasonal weather in your neck of the woods. Post frame construction tailored to your livestock and ag needs. Buildings built better, stronger, and built to last. So when it's time to put the hammer down, build with Thor. Visit ThorBuildings.com today. Comfy, it's been 30 years of Comfort King. I remember it like it was yesterday. Nice hair, Chris. Just look at you. You were just a baby Comfy. We made all sorts of amazing comfort creations using the highest quality materials. Comfort King invented Float Zero Gravity Gel. Comfy, we make a great team. How about another 30 years? Sounds great, Chris. Comfort King, where sweet dreams and better health await you. Welcome to Jiffy Lube MultiCare, where car care just makes sense. Say goodbye to car talk confusion with personalized service reviews that speak straight to you. Our highly trained service technicians have your back, decoding what your car is saying and taking care of the small stuff before it becomes big stuff. From Pennzoil oil changes to tires, brakes, batteries, and more, we've got it all covered. Your car deserves the best, making you ready for whatever is next. Putting you in the driver's seat of car care? That's a job for Jiffy. Jiffy Lube, 1780 South Columbia Road, Grand Forks. 
It's about tradition, values, and family ties. Pucklet Chevrolet GMC's tradition of giving back to our community remains a priority, and that's why we've partnered with many local nonprofit organizations and events. And our tradition of giving this community a fair and honest offer continues. This month, save up to $10,102 on a new 23 GMC Sierra 1500 SLT. We're Pucklet Chevrolet GMC in Valley City. GMC, we are professional grade. See dealer for details and 43024. Thanks for asking me out, John. Well, I saw in your profile that you like tires. I like tires. You like tires? I absolutely love tires. No way! Will you marry me? Yes, of course I'll marry you. Yes, yes, yes! Okay, so nobody gets that excited about tires. But you'll be excited when you hear about Welton's over-the-top customer service and amazing service at affordable prices. Welton's Tire Service, your local Goodyear dealer on Main Street in Lisbon, North Dakota, or online at weltonstire.net. Attention experienced senior level techs with five years of experience. Northern Plains Equipment, a certified Case IH dealer in Minot, North Dakota, is looking for you. Join the team and perform quality maintenance and repairs on all types of agricultural equipment. Northern Plains Equipment is a value-led, 100% employee-owned company, offering competitive wages, benefits, and job training. If you're ready to work in a great environment with great people, apply at plainsag.com. Northern Plains Equipment, Inc., proud to be an equal opportunity employer. It's wild. It's unpredictable. It's back. Shooting Star Casino presents Coors PRCA Championship Rodeo. Friday and Saturday, March 22nd and 23rd. 7.30 each night in the Fargo Dome. Top professional contestants from across the nation going head-to-head with the award-winning stock of Mossberger Rodeos in seven head-slamming, bone-jamming events. And dance each night at Cowboy Jacks. Get tickets at the Fargo Dome box office or Ticketmaster.com. The Coors PRCA Championship Rodeo. March 22nd and 23rd in the Fargo Dome. Where eight seconds is a lifetime. Sponsored by Holiday Inn Express and Corwin Ram of Fargo. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. This is Weather and Ag in Focus with Bridget Riedel, Justin Storm, and Dean Wysocki. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for rejoining us, 151 on this afternoon. We got a rundown on the forecast on that uh, impactful storm heading our way over the weekend and the beginning of next week someone's getting a lot of snow out of this one and we'll run down all those details in just a moment as well we got a few ag topics to go to but first guys we got to do a little bit of trivia here courtesy of cheyenne gardens a little garden trivia for a ten dollar certificate to cheyenne gardens that'll be valid on the 15th of april when they open so all you got to do is be the first person to call into the studio with the correct answer and you'll win yourself one of those certificates the phone numbers to the program and studio are 701-293-9000 that's the red wing shoes phone line all right your trivia question for today what flower <laughs> resembles a dragon what flower resembles a what dragon? flower resembles a dragon <clears throat> this isn't a joke Bridget, we got right? you muted no it's not a joke okay it would be like dean's venus flytrap when it shoots flames <laughs> yes yes that would be it <laughs> justin can you put the answer in slack please just so we know uh oh yeah yeah uh, color number one here uh, welcome to weather and ag and focus do you have an answer for today's trivia is it a venus fly trap no it it's not. not i like that though i like that answer nice guess uh let's see let's go to line two here uh caller can i get your first name please Lindsay, no, uh, yeah, Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay, and what what do you think the answer is? Uh, Snapdragon. Y- let's see. Is That's it Snapdragon? It. Yeah, you are that correct. Is correct. Good job, Lindsay. Congratulations. And uh, we're going to put you on a brief hold here, and our uh, producer will get some more information from you and tell you how to pick up your prize. Yeah. Okay, have a good weekend. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Lindsay. <laughs> 
All right, there we go. Good one for a Friday. Snapdragons. Right? Do you ever grow any? Do you ever have any? I have not. We used to grow a few I... of them. Yeah. Yeah, I my grandma had Snapdragons, so I've seen them. Yeah, I'm, you... If I was gonna, I was gonna. The alternative I was gonna pick was a Tiger Lily, actually. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, you take the flower and you pinch the sides of it, and it looks like a dragon's mouth opening. Really. Mm-hmm. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. See, I like the Venus yeah. flytrap. Those are awesome. I That's we used me. to have one for a while. They're fun, fun little plants. They're fun to watch. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Mm-hmm. Did well, you feed them? What's that? Did you feed? Did you used to feed it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We get that. now. They'd normally they, they'd somehow find the insects in the house, but yeah, occasionally we <laughs> we we get some flies and we capture them and um and feed it to them. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. Here, planty, planty, planty. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my brother tried to feed it something else and it ended up dying. Uh-oh. We had to get another. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, had a oh, rock, I had a rowdy brother. <laughs> it's like, no, you can't feed him that. <laughs> Man. Yikes. Yeah. There's a lot of things there I don't want to ask. Yeah. Okay, no, but like, you see yikes. like little pieces of hamburger. I'm like, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I do want to say congratulations to one of our former guests, and that's Teresa Gilley. She farms in, up in the Lancaster, Minnesota area. Teresa has recently been awarded by the American Soybean Association as the Outstanding Volunteer. And she did this uh, overriding all sorts of other states. Teresa, as we all know, does great work. She is a past president of Minnesota Soybean Growers Association. She advocates on behalf of rural health issues. She also uh, advocates for protecting the state's B20 biodiesel mandate. She has a very strong voice talking about things not only about biofuels, transportation, and infrastructure, and trade. And her peers describe her in wonderful ways, which we would too, because Teresa has been a valuable guest when we've had her on. And I think we will again, especially if we want to talk about biofuels, ethanol, et cetera. Teresa's all on board with it. Teresa's also a woman who didn't necessarily expect to farm. Her background is she came from town, married a farmer, but when her husband died by suicide, Teresa took over and she's continued to farm since. And she's been doing an outstanding job and also is a strong voice for agriculture. Yeah. Two other members from North Dakota, or two other citizens from North Dakota, have been inducted into the North Dakota Ag Hall of Fame. That recently happened at the North Dakota Winter Show. Brian O'Toole, he is a sixth generation centennial farmer in Pembina County. Brian has talked about wheat for many years. He has not only been on the U.S., excuse me, on the North Dakota wheat boards, but also U.S. wheat growers. Association Associates. He was chairman in 2015. He has done many market trade trips trying to increase wheat purchases all around the, the globe. And he also has chaired the North Dakota Prop and Crop Improvement and Seed Association, State Board of Ag Research, and Extensions Wheat Granting Committee. Additionally, the other person was Robert Stuber. Uh, excuse me, Roger. Roger is a third generation rancher from Stuber Ranch in Bowman, North Dakota. They He has had many unique contribute, con- contributions. Oh, you know, talking is so hard some days. Um, many contributions to the beef industry. He has been president of North Dakota Stockman's Association, also National Cattlemen's and the American Hereford Association. He has served on the North Dakota Beef Commission and North Dakota Natural Beef. Roger was instrumental in the early planning stages of the beef industry's long range plan when they brought together four national organizations and unified them for a stronger voice for beef animal agriculture in the U.S. And they raise great cattle out there. I hear good things about uh, Stuber Ranch. And he's also been North Dakota Stockman Association's top hand award. So congratulations to Teresa, to Roger Stuber, as well as to um, Brian O'Toole. Very happy to have those people on our side in agriculture. Awesome. So awesome. That, that's our show for today. Jay Thomas' show is going to be coming up, but I believe he has a guest host. Dean, is it... I am not. Might sh- be Tim Black. No, it's not, not Tim certain. today. It's not Tim today. It's oh. somebody else. You're going to have to stay tuned to find out. Oh, it's I a, love somebody else. It's a special All guest. Right. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. J. Thomas Show. It's coming up next. Be safe if you're traveling this weekend. Don't start the planting season off with sore feet.